outsourcing for biological networks. So it's a project of the IDEC lab, which brought me Cytoscape. So we're a project of the IDEC lab and the Cytoscape Consortium. We're supported by uh, Hoffman Moroche, Janssen Research and Development, Pfizer. And then, fortunately, this, this year our grant came through, and so we're now also supported by NCI. And so I want to uh, reference uh, the talks earlier today by Keith, where and unfortunately, some of the people who are, who are champions of my project are people who are uh, also involved in Transmark, and they push early on to, to say, you need to be sustainable, you need to have a strategy for sustainability before we even want to start thinking about this. And so we came up with a strategy, and it worked. And so we now have, have a, a runway where we can continue to make this be a real resource for people. But, why am I talking to you about Index? This is a Transmark meeting. Jeez. Okay. There's a reason. So these are both these are both components that are, you know, help us build the systems that we need to understand disease in the age of preposterously big data. Biological, biological reality is too big. You and I can't wrap our heads around it. Nobody can wrap their heads around real biological complexity. And we're, everybody's just starting to get that idea. It's just starting to come down to the idea that you go and look at a bunch of pathway diagrams in K and try to figure out what they mean. And they mean something. It's not like they're not, they don't express some truth. But they, you can't do that justice for what reality is with something that will fit on a sheet of paper that big. So where does that, where does, what that means we need to build applications, we need to build things that cope with complexity. And Transmart is one of those things that is a building block for applications like that. And so how can Transmart and Index work together given that we're wrangling biological networks? So I see that as places where there are networks that are outputs from analysis using Transmart. That and a network can be things that you may not expect a network to be. They aren't necessarily just encodings of what pathway diagrams are. Networks are basically groups of logical assertions. They are they are semantic webs unto themselves. They are triple stores. Every network is its own triple store. And therefore, you can encode all kinds of things as formal knowledge. So the outputs of your analyses need some place to be stored where they can be inspected computationally as opposed to merely read by humans. And so a thing like index can be a place to put your outputs, but it can also be a place where your application may want to access reference data. Somebody else has created an output, somebody else has curated a model. You want to consult that in your application while you're using the, the, the information from transport. Then we hope to provide that kind of service. Finally, because Index is providing a social platform where it is a user content driven world, this is a place where you can um, use Index as part of your strategy for collaboration. Now, here's something to just ground this. Supposing that you're working with Transmart you pull some RNA-seq data out of Transmart and you're going to do some analyses for that, you generate some networks. Chances are you may want to, to have consulted some reference networks in order as part of your, your, your analysis. You are contrasting the, the things that you're getting out of the RNA-seq data that tells you what species are actually present versus what people have proposed as canonical mechanisms beforehand. From that, you create networks in context. Maybe these are your best analyses of what this patient or this cadre, this group experiencing the disease in a particular manner, what network characterizes them. You want a place to store that and share that and use it later. Launching their offer. So now that having, I hope, said that you're thinking that might be worthwhile, then let me tell you more about the index and how it makes this possible more than I would if it was just
just a file system. So it's a community. So we're building the pages, your LinkedIn pages, your Facebook page of you and your networks, or your group and their networks. So from the get-go, each index server is has got a set of accounts, and those accounts are the things that people come into the description, but you have to grant them access if they're going to see the content. But you can also create a group, and then you can start inviting people to be members of that group. And then you can control what, the, what that group can and can't do, what permissions that group might have for things. And so it's infrastructure for collaboration. It's a resource. Now, right now, the large version of index doesn't have a lot in it yet. We are, because we are user content driven, we're very at the beginning of our curve. And so what we're doing is we're going out and we're recruiting people who've already created network resources in, in different formats, and we're, we're bringing them into the system and helping them uh, express those. But the idea is it's not the networks that index say is the right, it's the networks that that, that contributor uh, proposes. And so when you go and do one in index itself, this isn't intended to be like gene cards. This isn't the final in uh, 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 viewing for this network. This isn't claiming this is the optimal way to view the network. This is the right interface to inspect the network. You may want to sample it. You may want to query it. But most of the time, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense for you to grab the whole thing to look at. And so we're, we're, we're building into our API the idea of various ways of querying the network as standard operating procedure. So there's 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 been I think too many hairballs created things where people have worked very hard to make their system capable of rendering something that has thousands and thousands of edges. You can't understand thousands and thousands of edges just by looking at it. So instead you have to ask what are the applications that let me dissect that? And then once you ask what kind of applications are those, then you have to ask what kind of API is going to be the right thing for me to get subsets of that of my network so that I can meaningfully work with it. By the old uh, uh, languages, we're not going to try to reconcile all of that stuff into one container. Moreover, there's a whole bunch of people who generated really important information, and there's stuff sitting there in tables. You know, it's in supplementary material or back of the paper or whatever. And if you say, well, you better change this in Firefox, or you better convert this to OpenBell, and uh, by the way, why don't you take a couple of weeks and figure out how to do that? That's not going to fly. You've got to say, fine, bring it in, bring it in, we'll take whatever. So we're very concerned about getting after this side of the world. This is totally underserved. Where can, where's the repository that you can go and browse around with all of these interesting systematically generated networks that people have created, gene association networks to be actual co-occurrence, co-variation, things like that. Where do, you, where do you find those resources? Basically, you can find these resources. You can find protein interaction network data, and we need to, we're going to be working with these providers to aggregate their stuff. You can find existing carrying networks, and we're going to work with these providers to aggregate their stuff. But there's a whole world of stuff that's coming straight out of either systematic uh, analysis or coming out of straightforward experiments that just simply let the function cross the other networks. We want to be able to pull to all of those networks and put them into a bundle where they can all live together and you can get at them with the same API. Now, there still may be intellectual work in taking some of these fossil proteomic data and reconciling it so that you can integrate it with somebody else's uh, uh, curated model. But we've done the first layer. We've reconciled the control vocabularies, things like that. And we put it in common API. There's still going to be some important work for us to do and work with people in developing applications that know how to merge different kinds of formats, uh, how to synthesize larger models, how to subset those larger models. How in the world are you going to maintain that across a heterogeneous field of networks? How are you, how are you going to be, be robust? Instead, 
we're going to say, we're going to make it easy for you to subset networks, ask straightforward, simple queries, simple traversals, simple filterings, and then once you have it in your hands, you have a manageable amount of stuff that all fits in RAM. Now you can be smart. You can do you can do all of those things. We our role is as this infrastructure platform, not as the answer machine. We aren't we aren't smart, we aren't answering the biological questions. Applications using this are things that can be smart to answer the biological questions. Some of the things that we're um, uh, working on immediately, uh, we're just uh, Cytoscape is going to talk to uh, this via that. We are a Cytoscape family member. We are increasingly integrating with Cytoscape and especially with the vision of Cytoscape that it's going to be. Cytoscape is not going to be a Java swing desktop application forever, right? And so Index is one of the steps in that direction of a service-oriented architecture. You want to build custom visual visualizations? Great. You don't have to build the stack from the bottom up. Just <coughs> stuff in Index and use the API to grab the stuff and then go to town with your visualization. Don't think about building your own database. Uh, writing scripts. We're gonna, uh, I've got a prototype Python library, for example, uh, that uh, we'll be letting out in about a month. The idea there is, you know, do your work in Python, do your work in R, and do the part that makes sense to do in Python and R. Drop it in the, in the sh your shared repository, access it with that web visualization application, decouple them, avoid vertical stacks, let people build stuff in bite-sized, modular, maintainable units. It's server software. It's not just one big public server. We've got, if you have a private site, then when, just as you can have private transmarts, you can access your private networks. But what do you do with the stuff in the public site? You want the stuff in the public site. Well, you could just access it directly in, in by your application. But since we were, you know, we, we got a very good industrial base here of, of having the three farms pushing us uh, requirements early on. And so they said, we need a synchronization plan. We need an ability to say, I want to regularly get the latest version of X and bring it down to my server behind the firewall so that my stuff never leaves my firewall, but I can still work with the latest and greatest stuff off the public server. But if you reference the K pathway, the default thing gets you to the current best version, right? And if your paper, your conclusions, if your process, your analytic outcome depended on a particular version, and you need that reproducibility, then you need a link to the right thing. Now, moreover, um, the, you may also then, for an important general problem of a problem structure that is attached. Muted.
Unmuted. Lastly, it's a platform. I'm saying it's a platform. It's a, since this is kind of a new, a new approach on problems, it is a platform for tracking the problems with network element, network content. And I think that this is something where I can't imagine we've got it right in Roman 1.0, uh, that we're going to need to get a bunch of people out here debating this. And, you know, it might actually be that the thing that we need to coordinate with uh, translators that uh, embraces both of our needs. We need to work on our client libraries. Now currently we have prototypes, a prototype Python library. Uh, we have an R library, that library, so that you can make your own web app. So, at the end of the kind of string string properties or properties that use control vocabularies. So theoretically, a boost can find edge property. You can find any edge property in your heart desire. So if you, if you use the standard protocol to have a standard path format of, of network load, you can work within that standard for a day of for waiting. But if you have a, a size state, you know, it's in the wrong way.